Dustin, how are you? I'm pretty good. You're joining us in the Matthew Thornton room right now. Excellent. So Excellent. We're just about ready to start. I am just going to I'm just going to make sure your mic is all set here in the back. Give me one second. Yes, you have a seat. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Uh, yes, I thought Tom was coming, but I guess not. Okay. All right, Bill, would you just give me a test one, two, three? Test one, two, three. Test, test, one, two, one, two. Bill, can you hear me from over here? Yes, I can. Great. All right, this one's all set. I think uh, Chris is going to start here in just a minute. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Chris, whenever you're ready. Okay. Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the March, March 18th meeting of the Merrimack New Hampshire Trustees of Trust Funds. As, as always, we'll start with introductions. I'm Chris Christensen. To my left is... Pat Heinrich. Pat Heinrich. I'm also I'm a trustee. Uh, in the audience, Matt, do you have a mic on? Yes, I do. Okay. Want to introduce yourself? Yeah, this is Matt Chevenel, Assistant Superintendent for Business for the Merrimack School District. And accompanying me are uh, Rachel Papke and Kim Damaris, the parent uh, teacher group from Thornton's Ferry Elementary School. Okay, thank uh, you. Rachel, can you spell your last name for me? It is P as in Peter, A E P as in Peter, K E. And Kim Damaris? And Tom Boland, Tom Boland, finance director for the town. Very good, thank you. Bill Wilkes on the phone, trustee. Thank you, Bill. And you need to ask him if he's alone and all that other good stuff, where he is. Where he is. Yeah. Okay, is there anybody else in the room with you, Bill? No. Okay. Thank you. Okay. First order of business here today is an SAU proposal having to do with the Thornton's Ferry School playground. So I'm just going to turn the floor over to Matt Chevenel. Sure. And if I need some assistance, I will uh, ask the parents to come join me at the table, if you don't mind. That's fine. Okay. Um, this, I guess, has been going on. It's an effort that's been going on, at least that I know of, for at least a year, correct? A little bit over. And parents at Thornton's Ferry, as well as, you know, Reeds and, and MES, have always raised money for, uh, for playgrounds. It's a good community building effort. It's uh, something that's uh, really great and needed at the school. The old structure that we had was uh, not appropriate anymore, it had safety concerns and it had to be taken away. So there's an inclusive playground that the uh, parents are of Thornton's Ferry are proposing. Uh, they've raised to date, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, $100,000, and they're looking for just that little much more to get them over the, the hump so they can begin the ordering process. And I think the request back then was when they met at Rotary was 25, but I think given the uh, supply chain issues and the cost of freight and fuel and everything like that right now, I think they would probably be more comfortable with asking for 45000 
to help finish this off and get the equipment ordered um, this as soon as possible and get the job done over the summertime and get it in place for the kids uh, next year. The district has in its operating budget $30,000 for site work and to make it ADA accessible through paving of walkways and access points. And so we're contributing, the district is contributing 30,000 towards that end. We've already contracted with Steve Keach to do all the design layout. He, he already has been to the site and has uh, you know shot all the grades and everything like that. So the playground company, who's gonna be doing the installation because we want the vendor to do the installation because it's not like the old days where you put up a wood structure and it was a community event and everything like that. There's so much liability that that is associated with any kind of playground structure right down to the type of mulch you're putting. It has to be certified mulch. It can't be mulch from, I don't know, <coughs> PJs or something like that. It has to be <coughs> certified playground mulch it has to be a certain thickness, and it comes with a certificate that we show our insurance company, and they come over and they inspect it and they bless it. You know, it's to protect the district. Uh, when I was a kid, playgrounds were a bunch of steel bars on asphalt. Times have changed, you know, for the better. And so we hope that uh, you'll take a look at this uh, proposal. There's an outline here of uh, what was done at the Rotary Club. And um, you know, we just want this for your consideration today. And if there's any questions, I'll be happy to, to field them, or I'll ask Rachel or Kim to just chime on in. OK, thank you very much. So this is a formal request from the school district of the trustees for $45,000. Thank you. Yeah, I'm a little, I mean, I'm a little troubled with uh, the fact that it's grown twenty thousand dollars, Matt. I mean, that's more than a supply chain issue. And uh, you know, are you basically saying that uh, everything's escalated twenty thousand dollars? I have a hard time with that. Well, I think right right now, I don't think the, the the quotes are absolutely finalized. So that is to give us some sort of cushion. We will only we will only invoice you for what we spend. So we're looking for a cap. Um, and so if it's thirty thousand dollars we need to finish the job, that's what it will be. I'm not saying this is you know with a contingency factor in there. So it's it's not just an escalation; it's a firming up the design, and then putting in a contingency in there. So this is a max out of pocket for you guys, not to exceed. It probably will come in less, but anything that we have will will give you the proper paperwork, documentation, everything like that. And uh, you know you'll reimburse the school district if you agree to that. You can make it a little bit lower if you're more comfortable with that. That's fine. Um, we have thirty thousand for site work. We could probably offload some of that into funding the playground, depending upon how much the site work actually comes in at. Um, so we we'll see. So this is a not to exceed price, Bill. We're just trying to lay all our cards on the table so there's no surprises later on. Thank you. Can you hear all of that, Bill? Yes, I can. Okay, thank you. I can. Um, I guess, you know, I'd like to, you know, we had an original bill of materials that was pre presented to us, and I just have, you know, I'm, I'm not sure where I want to go with this, but I'm just having a, an issue with a $20,000 increase. I mean, if it was a 5,000 or 10,000 maybe, but uh, 20,000 is quite a jump. So I, you know, I put it out to the rest of the trustees as to what their thoughts are. Okay, thank you. Well, that, that's why we're here, Bill. We're here to have a, have a conversation, so. So Rachel or Kim, you want to come up to the microphone and expand on that? Could I, I say I something to, first, please? Sure. I have to understand what Bill is saying, that the time frame for a 20% increase is pretty brief. Well, Go I'm ahead, trying to Pat. figure out what you said, Bill, the original bill that you were re talking about, because the request, that's, the official request says 42.5. So what original request did you get? 
are you talking about? We had a presentation at the Rotary Club, Pat. Okay, well, see, that's out. we're not the Rotary Club. Well, and to I'm, be yeah, honest, I, yeah, to be yeah, honest with you, um, last month you asked me to look into this, and so I did contact Matt because I thought we were, as trustees, maybe going to pay the $30,000 that this, the district is putting forward. And at that time I discovered that they're talking about the rubber surfacing and, and the wood chips and whatever, and my concerns were that's a yearly cost, isn't it going to be? Added to well, the budget? The, the initial cost is there, but the yearly cost is, is way much less than that. It's probably like okay. another three or four thousand dollars every couple of years to do a refresh on the, uh, the mulching. But what I think the increase might have been, if you take a look at the f official request, the email, because what surprised me when I saw this was freight, $4,000, and installation, $23,000. And I would have thought that would have been part of the equipment price. So that surprised me. But I think that's the $20,000 that you're concerned about is that installation and freight cost that somebody's got to pay to get the stuff here. And so I don't know if you yeah, go. Pat, we had a, uh, you know, I hate to reference our presentation at the Rotary Club, but we had a, a presentation at the Rotary Club that was one number and now it's changed by twenty thousand dollars and that's the bottom line from where i'm my, where i'm coming from so um you know what matt presented uh to the trustees before the meeting uh was not the same was not maybe it didn't come from the same people yeah so to speak all right yes. so the, the email we had <clears throat> was Correct me if I'm wrong. Forty-two thousand five hundred. Correct. Today you're looking at forty-five. I just 000. round it up, you know, just for the sake of conversation. If forty-two five is the number, forty-two five is the number. I'm looking at the wrong presentation. So since I am not in the Rotary, um, what was presented to the Rotary? What's the difference? Bill, so let's, let's listen to the people behind the project. Right. That's what yeah. I'm going to do. Come forward. Okay. Um, this is Rachel. Um, so what was presented at the Rotary is in front of you um, that may, Matt handed out um, as part of that Parents and Teachers of Thornton's Ferry School presentation. Um, so at the time we went in, talked through the entire process that we've gone through, how we formed the committee, um, the s steps that we've taken to date, um, things that we've done to the playground um, that were smaller things, right? Like we've put stencils on the playground. We've um, been able to bring in smaller games and such, but really then focused at the end of the presentation on this playground equipment purchase. Um, at the time um, when we were presenting that purchase, um, I believe it's in the back that there was um, $27,000 that we said we needed to meet our fundraising goal. Um, and then I think after that, um, there was some discussion and you guys were then brought into that discussion. Um, so with working with Matt, the um, number that you see, that 42.5, were options that were all part of um, the number that was presented at a time, but they were broken out into things that the district and or other groups could, tangible items that we could put cost on. So we could say the labor, you know, we can break out the labor and it costs this much. We can break out the freight and shipping. We can break out the wood chips. So we put a, a, that 42.5 request um, in through Matt and the district. Um, with the, the, you know, and one of the discussions that Matt and I had was that we had um, all of this, which you'll see in the presentation, was generated by student voice um, and brought together through this parent committee and um, teacher reps that were part of this committee. So the students came to us with all kinds of ideas and things that they wanted to see on this playground. So a lot of this, the majority of this, was driven by that student voice. Um, there were things that as we were putting it together when we started this back in April, um, we had a very small budget. Um, and so we were on a smaller scale. And then as we were going through fundraising efforts, um, we realized, okay, we can start to, you know, in increase, you know, some of, expand some of the design, um, but we still didn't get to all of the kids' wish list. So there's things like um, shade structures, like roof structures that we could include on this design that are not included now. 
So if we were to get over, you know, if, if that 42.5 were funded, we could do things that would go right back into the design of that playground. Like Matt said, it's not quite finalized yet, um, but it's in a pretty good spot. Okay, so, so between the time of the rotary presentation and now, throughout the year, there's been a period of discovery with, mm -hmm. you said, student voice uh, coming forward with other options that could be put in that would greatly enhance the usability and um, the um, functionality of, of the playground. Like you were saying, shade, shade structures. Mm -hmm. We met out there at the hottest day in August, right? Mm -hmm. It was hot. With mm -hmm. no shade, and we all huddled around that one oak tree mm -hmm. or whatever kind of tree it was yeah. and to have shade in that area you know I don't think something that was considered back then but it's something that I think is is really necessary because that field bakes it really does and when it's uh, so, when it's hot out so, it's, it is very hot out. hang on Bill so that's an enhanced so Matt, that came. Bill go so ahead. Matt, Matt the, the presentation was after the summer to us and what I'm hearing is the scope has been enhanced with new features since that presentation, which was in the fall. So um, the bottom line is it's not necessarily due to supply chain issues and freight and all that sort of thing. I'm hearing that the scope has changed and there's been some enhancements based on kids' uh, desires, wish list or whatever. So Cor correct. The, yeah. yeah, correct. And, and I will say, I mean, the, the, the inflation escalation is a real thing. Um, it's something we, we don't have um, a tangible, quantifiable number for yet. Um, but both our playground rep, the wood chip supplier, everybody knows that they're going to either have surcharges or increases. They just haven't been able to give them to us yet because they have not been negotiated. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to suggest that while the thoughts are here, uh, it's not our job necessarily to second guess or redesign what some committee's been working on for a year and then come in at the last minute and say, oh, well, did you think about this? Did you think about that? Uh, that's not really our job, but we do need to uh, be aware of what's going on. So I appreciate the... Uh, approaches that you're taking. Uh, the question I have is, it wasn't really clear to me how much of this is going to be mulch on the ground that needs to be replaced every year and how much is going to be uh, rubber matting or whatever. I went to a, an uh, ADA child's playground uh, in uh, Westford, Mass. And the whole area was covered with rubber matting. Mm -hmm. No, no mulch. So you could put wheelchairs wherever you wanted to go or, or walkers or what have you because it wasn't just kids in wheelchairs. It was grandparents in wheelchairs as well or parents in wheelchairs or older siblings, whatever. Uh, and so I'm wondering if there's uh, future plans to make the whole thing compliant or we're going to be replacing mulch every couple of years um, so right now the current that's, so that's that's kind of a long-term question and I, I don't think it's our job as, as trustees to be in the maintenance business every couple of years but uh, certainly we want to make sure that things are going well uh, from the start and then there's a backup question uh, about and this is this is getting a little further away from topic, but if there's an anticipation that the uh, ferry schools, excuse me, the Reeds Ferry School and uh, J. Muse or the uh, elementary school, Master Cola Elementary, would be likely to be doing similar projects as a follow-on, and and the history there is that we did a project like this for the library in all four elementary uh, venues and we did one a year and we had the money at the time to do it so I'm, I'm just curious if there's a 
a long-term plan here for all of the schools that we need to be aware of in the background? Um, you know, currently we look at our playgrounds and we have them inspected every single year. Um, we have our insurance carrier come over and, and certify them. And uh, everything that we have in other locations right now is, uh, is up to snuff. So in the next five to ten years, I don't see, maybe after ten years, um, you know, maybe Rachel will still be here and maybe whatever. But, uh, you know, we'll She probably we'll, won't have kids in the elementary school. Schools, no. Well, maybe that, that's, they'll start a playground that, consulting yeah, business. Yeah, <laughs> playground consulting business. She'll transition <laughs> on to, you know, other, other venues. But uh, I, I, don't, I don't see that from, from what I know and talking to Tom Tussaud, our facilities director, I don't see the, the urgent need for any uh, playground structures, additional or modifications there too uh, in, the, in the near future. It's not on our CIP. It's not even in discussion as far as operating budget. The only thing we'd have to do for the operating budget is to look at what the ongoing maintenance cost of this is going to be and maybe it's to a refresh of the wood chips every single year and we, we would budget for that for 24 25 because we've already put to bed the 22 23 23 24 22 23 operating budget and that's going to be up for a vote so um, there's no items for the playground in that budget because everything's going to be fresh do you want me to answer your first question on the surfacing Yes, thank you. Okay, um, so the rubber surfacing right now is required to go. We have one piece um, that is called the inclusive whorl. Um, so that piece is set into the ground at ground level so a wheelchair um, or other mobile device can um, roll right onto that. Um, because of the nature of that spinning, it requires rubber surfacing so mulch is not um, allowed option. to be around yeah. that. Um, so that is the only piece right now that requires rubber surfacing. And while we would love to have rubber surfacing everywhere because it's, kids love it and it's safe, um, it's just very, very expensive you know, to put in and maintenance wise as well. So mulch, the wood chips would be everywhere on the entire, um, where all the equipment would be, except for that um, inclusive world, which we've kind of targeted for the top of the tarmac. We've, we've walked through that where we think it's gonna go. So. Right. Thank you. And is the, the layout such that additional uh, elements can be added as you move along through the years and, and find different needs? Oh, as far as the, uh, the topography where the equipment's going to be, absolutely. Okay. It, it, can, it, it can expand at a very rapid rate if there is a, a need to. Um, the, uh, the lower playground at Thornton's Ferry is, is pretty much built out unless we want to come closer to the school. But, uh, you know, and then, then we have the uh, preschool uh, playground that's right outside the uh, kindergarten first grade wing. And uh, we have the upper playground, which this is where this is located. And there's plenty of space to expand. Mm -hmm. Plenty. Okay. Um, I guess I want to add in that our job as the trustees of the trust fund is to make decisions regarding the expenditure of funds based on the wishes of the donor. The Gage Lawrence fund is supposed to be spent, the income is supposed to be spent annually by the school district on elementary schools. Um, when I was the trustee of the library. You're mixing that up with the Watkins fund. Um, actually, no, but that's okay. Um, as a library trustee, I used to get money from the trustees of the trust fund, and I knew, based on the will, we had to buy fiction books. And another one told us we had to buy books for uh, women's books. Um, but we didn't tell the trustees exactly the names of the books that we bought. I view this as the school district asking for money from a fund that was established for elementary schools, and how you want to use it is up to you. Uh, a bill has a concern because, yes, the cost went up. And I was surprised when I got the uh, breakdown here that it involved installation, that that wasn't part of your fundraising effort. But you know how companies are. Th things get tacked on at the end. I understand that. And, you and, know, in, in years past, what would happen when Dave Johnson was uh, yes. the trustee? Yes, um, I remember this was, that. This was set up with uh, O'Neill years ago. And... Uh, Dave Johnson, I would ask Dave Johnson, how much is in the Gage Lawrence Fund, how much is in the other fund, how much is in Fund A, Fund B? 
and he would give me those amounts, and it would amount to maybe of, of interest, of income, of maybe twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000, and he would write me, the district, a check that we would take, right. and we would just deposit would it, it in the general fund. Yeah. I don't feel like nickel and diming you. And so that's, it was just fund. going essentially without a purpose to offset the tax rate. That's what was happening with that money. And you and I both know that if we were to give you forty-two five and you needed $1,000 more, you'd find it in I'd your budget because you have enough money in that budget to cover it. So. Well, we got our GMR in for our health rates, so I'm going to oh, be announcing go. that too. So that's, that's a good thing. So that's a little cushion right there. So I don't have a I, I don't have a problem with the forty two five or the forty five thousand, and I appreciate Bill's concerns, and I appreciate the list of expenditures here that you've given us, but you're asking us for a fund to be spent on elementary schools, and we do have money that we're supposed to be managing and distributing for use in the elementary schools. Okay. Any further questions or discussion? Let's let's have a motion before we move on to the next item. Do you have a motion, Pat or Bill? I'm comfortable what, with what Bill wants to to move. Bill, you got a motion? Uh, yeah, I'm here. I I mean, I'm I'm not sure where we're at. Are we are we saying that we want a motion for forty two thousand dollars, or are we or is it or what, are, what exactly is, is the discussion? I had a little bit of a hard time hearing it, but um, you know, my, my comment is that I don't like an open che checkbook on anything, and if I'm a trustee with a fiduciary responsibility, I don't just give, I, I don't feel it's my position to just give somebody an open checkbook, and I don't believe in padding, and I don't believe in you know, you know uh, exceeding uh, a budget because you know money's there so you know that's my personal philosophy I've worked in industry for years I know a lot about budgeting and I don't I don't like I don't like padded budgets so I, I'd be comfortable with the firm number but I don't want somebody just having extra money for slush funds for you know willy-nilly whatever they want to do with it so are you comfortable with 425 I, I don't even know what the forty the forty two five if, if it's a hard I don't know if it's a hard number or, or you know I've kind of gotten the impression it's a padded number. Well, I think it's uh, as we've done with some of the other projects in the past. It's uh, a set aside number so that uh, they have funds in hand, if you will, uh, or to to go out to bid and get the numbers and then send us an invoice for the exact amount, which is what we've done with uh, oh, well, like last fall when we bought computers and uh, computer cases and, and all the rest of that stuff. Yeah. Uh, I mean, no, no, one, no one's going to, to look at this as that is not in our nature. You know, we're very... Well, you, you kind of said it was, Matt, you're kind of, you know, yeah. saying two different things here. One minute you say... That you know, it's kind of like an estimate, and you know, it's it's a round number. You know, you're not saying that it's based on you know the vendor's firm quote or anything like that. So, um, you know, I'm a little uncomfortable with that. Well, when you when you talk about padding in industry, I worked in industry for around 10 years, and whenever you bid out a contract, you always had something called a, a management reserve. And, uh, you know, that was something that was utilized for uh, any, anything that could go wrong. If you're building a middle school or you're doing an addition on a building, you always like to hold on to a 10% contingency fund because you never know what's going to happen. What we're asking for is just a number based upon our best estimates of what the bids are going to come in at. And we will only ask for what we need and not ask for a penny more. We're not into wasting your money. We're not into making expenditures that are frivolous based upon whim. Everything's going to be planned out, and it's going to be what we need and only what we need. Um, if I can jump in for a second, um, we have a firm number of, if, no, well, a number of 42.5, and, and Bill is right. You did say you rounded it up. The difference Absolutely. here, the difference here is that 
if we make a motion for 425 and you discover that you need more money, we are here. You can come back. And I like Chris's thought about it's a, it's a set aside number. It's not like the tax that you can say, oh, wait, wait a minute. It's not like the tax budget. We're here every month. Yeah. So if there's a need, you can come back. But that might make feel bill, uh, yeah, feel a little better um, because it's it, it maybe it's not a final number, and we understand that. Well, if you but authorize I, forty-two five, um, I guarantee you anything more than that, we will we will subsume in the operating budget, and we will not be back. How's that, Bill? I mean, I, I, I'm going to go along with it, but I want everybody to know that you know if I can only afford a Tahoe. Ooh, we lost him. Point is, you know, there has to be a budget to everything we do in life, and you know, just because oh, all of a sudden we've just these have this money, and oh, wouldn't it be nice to go, you know, get some more things? We have to, you know, cap things at some point, no matter what we're doing. If I'm building a house or building a playground or whatever, I mean, I there's a limit to what you can do. So, you know. The scope has definitely changed this morning, uh, and more features have been added. I guess that's okay, but don't come back and say, hey, we want three more features because wouldn't it be nice? Because guess what? We can't afford it. Um, or maybe we want some of those funds for something different that's totally legitimate. I mean, I'm not against spending the funds that we have available, but you know, we might want to spend them on other things that are a legitimate product projects within the school department. Okay. In the absence of anybody else, I'm going to make a motion. I move that we authorize the Watkins Fund to set aside $42,500 uh, in anticipation of receiving invoices from the uh, SAU 26 for playground equipment and related expenses at the Thornton's Ferry School. Is there I'll, a second? I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? Why did you decide the Watkins Fund? Because it's got <clears> more <throat> money in it. Yeah, I was looking at that for the library. How much money does the Watkins Fund have in it, by the way? I don't have the latest MS. Oh, okay. Uh, Watkins has, on the income side, and this this is from the January statement. Yeah. I know the funds have changed over the last several weeks. Uh, Eight hundred and twenty thousand. The Watkins Forest Fund income fund had two hundred and seventy-five. This is accumulated income. It's not the total fund. And Gage and Lawrence had four hundred and twenty-nine thousand. Master Cola had 92,000 and the Stockley funded 2,800. Well, that's why I was looking at the Gage Lawrence for this as opposed to the Watkins Fund. Uh, but cuz Gage Lawrence is is uh, elementary. They're all elementary. Or well, Watkins specifically is um we'll, we'll discuss that some other time. Mhm. Mm uh, so I have a second from Pat. Is there any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye because we're on phone. It's a roll call vote. So Pat? Yeah. Yes. Bill? Yes. Chair votes yes. So three, zero, zero. Thank you. Thank you. We're so appreciative. Thank you very much for your consideration, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. So, we have. Uh, Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Something from the Merrimack High School Library is that still coming up? Or we? Yeah, yeah. If 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 you don't mind. Not a bit. I know this is. I think this is the first time you're you're seeing this. There may have been a, an email. If you guys want to, you, you're more than welcome to see the rest of the process. And That's no one will copy. take offense if you. Okay. I thought he had. Do you have another copy for Bill? Yeah, I do. Tom, Tom, Tom.
Now, the, the, the trustees in the past have been gracious enough to provide us with funds to renovate, remodel, and uh, make for better our libraries, <clears throat> uh, with the exception of the middle school, which we were fortunate enough to build a brand new school at the time, so it's pretty much configured as we like it to be. And the functionality and the look and feel of the middle school library far exceeds that of the, uh, the high school library. Um, you've helped us out with JMU's, with Massacola Elementary School, with Thornton's Ferry, uh, with Reed's Ferry. Um, the only library that we haven't touched has been the high school. I'm not sure about the, the funding mechanism you would utilize for that, but this is a proposal with a quote but it's not finalized yet. They're still picking out colors and finishes and everything like that. And we're looking at, uh, you know, right now, 159,107.50 um, all in. Uh, there are drawings, there are plans. It would make a great addition to the high school library. I don't know when's the last time anybody here has been in the high school library, but I don't want to say that it's a little sad looking, but it is a little sad looking. It'd be nice to do an enhancement of the library, move the circulation desk into the center. There's graphic pictorials that we have done and kind of, kind of update it to give it that, um, to give it a more adult feel to it than your classic sit in the hard wooden chair kind of library look. So it's a proposal right now. Um, the high school library staff is exceedingly excited about the, the possibility. So I'd just like to bring it before you for your consideration. Um, if you do consider taking part in, in funding this uh, transformation of the library um, that would more than likely, uh, if all goes well, take place over the summertime. Uh, first thing we would do is we would take everything out. We would replace the carpet. That would be our expense to bear. And then we would reconfigure the library in, you know, these kind of soft seating, more curved elements, um, more grown up and, and adult looking. I was talking with uh, our chief education officer, Bill Olson, before I came here. And Bill has a background similar to mine in school facilities and finance also before becoming a, a superintendent of schools in Western Massachusetts for the last 17 years. And we're really of the same mind that the physical environment can really aid in Number one, modifying behavior, um, adding a sense of purpose when you're in that space, and just kind of changing the entire look and feel of it for the better, for the betterment of students. Uh, physical environments of classrooms and common spaces, they do have an impact on, on teaching and learning and how serious the kids are and how relaxed and comfortable they are in a, in a in a space uh, so that's the whole thought behind this because that library is still stuck in the, the 70s or whenever it was built and uh, you know we'd like to do a refresh of it to give it more of a cafe kind of feeling and to make the kids that go in there feel like the adults and the future leaders of uh, you know the country that they're going to turn into. So we think it's a first step uh, to provide them with a mature adult, nice space. So that's what we have before you. It's always interesting to me to see the evolution of this kind of stuff. When I was a kid in school, it was a big deal to have one television set <laughs> on wheels that they rolled around in different classrooms. Right. A couple of years ago, we added to the elementary school libraries, uh, what to me was significant electronics, whiteboards and projections and uh, stuff that makes the library a classroom as well. I expect in probably the not too distant future, 
all of those great improvements will be in every classroom. But be that as it may, what we're looking at here, and, and I'm saying this in part for the, the audience who can't see the pictures, uh, is mostly hardscape. And I'm wondering if there's a difference in the use of the high school library that there's no or less need for uh, the electronics and the, the classroom atmosphere as opposed to a uh, more individual use operation. Yeah, I think I think you know this this kind of talks to there is a, a, a computer lab off to the uh, in the back of the library. Uh, where you see the uh, table, I think on page three of eight, where you see table seven against the wall uh, on both sides. Um, so that would be the main spot. But, you know, this is basically set up um, with technology in mind. It would have an overhead projector. It already has one. Um, but uh, this is more about kids having a space for collaborative learning as opposed to just going in there and sitting and reading a book. That's why you have certain clusters as opposed to tables with rows and seats. Uh, so it's more about, um, it's, it's more about collaborating, conversations, quiet conversations, discussions, doing homework together, looking at projects together, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the technology in the library is mostly uh, brought in by kids with uh, Chromebooks that the district supplies. When we had to go remote, we spent a lot of money on, on Chromebooks for, for kids. Um, probably half a million dollars worth out of the ESSER grant funds. So the Wi-Fi in that space has to be very robust. It is right now. And so it would be a, a spot where <clears throat> A student would come in, bring their Chromebook or laptop or whatever kind of device they have, hook into the, uh, the Wi-Fi and do work and research through the library automation system that they can pick up in there. And uh, through the, there's nothing that's going to replace books, you know. Book is a book is a book. And book and reference materials that are there. So it's kind of a combination thereof. It, but it just lends itself to... Uh, more group interaction and kind of small group collaboration. Thank you. Bill or Pat, do you have any comments or questions? I was going to comment on the fact that um, the library administrator, if you will, is now called the Library and Technology uh, Services. So technology is main, is part of um, is a huge part of libraries and over the last 20 years librarians have rewritten their job descriptions and reinvented what it is that they do to meet with technology um, it's there and we have people that need to teach our children how to use it and a whole lot of what they do at the high school is go to the library and do the research and look things up and 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 certainly team projects we need them to be have a place and a space to work together yeah yeah, we used to have just um, a director of library services, and then we finally built a computer network in this district 20 years ago because there was there was none. Um, you know th that role kind of morphed into the director of uh, technology and, and library media services. Um, right now, we have very well trained uh, libra librarians, but I'm sure that's not the term we, we use for them anymore. That's probably an antiquated term that I'm, I get stuck in my head. But uh, they're they're more uh, digital learning specialists, basically, and uh, they're there to assist kids with with research and how to use the technology and to be teaching partners as opposed to just reference librarians with the card catalog back in the, the good old days. In fact, I think we got rid of the remaining card catalogs that we had in the uh, library probably 10, 10 years ago or so. Uh, we actually had a little auction and people bought them. You know, They make good, good uh, places to store the nuts and bolts that you have in your garage of various sizes. So they're very kind of popular. But uh, 
the whole library um, program has really kind of changed and, uh, you know, excelled and kept up with the times uh, as it has to. Uh, and it's a collaboration with both teaching staff, librarians, and the physical library itself. So, yeah. Well, that right. makes the need for renovating the library to bring it into what we're doing today, Correct. actually, yeah. as opposed to what we were doing. We're doing. And the fact of the matter is if the elementary, middle, upper elementary, and the middle school have an up-to-date library, and to come up to the high school, which is your step to get off to college, and they're back in the 20th century, uh, that's not a good thing. So I'm glad that you're uh, looking at renovating the library. Well, that, that, that was an issue, you know, to draw a parallel. When we first built the middle school back in 2004, that was like a state-of-the-art facility, you know, and uh, people would go from there with all the technology and everything that was hardwired in to, to the high school, and it was almost like a drop-down. You know, and so now we've been gradually bringing the high school up to speed, and this is kind of like the one of the last pieces of the uh, the puzzle to put put together to give them an up to date modern space that's equivalent or or better than uh, what you have in the uh, in the in Merrimack Middle School. Bill, anything you want to add? Um, I was just wondering if we could. Uh, table this until the April meeting, uh, maybe visit the existing conditions uh, between now and April and uh, kind of with our eyeballs get a look at what, what the existing conditions are and, and what the improvements would be. Do you have a, a timeline that we have any pressure under? Well, because, you know, a shipping container now costs $23,000 to come over from where it's coming over, and it used to be like $2,300, so the, it, it will probably go down. There is a, a, a tad of a constraint to get this finished, but if, if you feel the need to have a walkthrough of the library, Jessica Gott is the one who was uh, behind all the... Uh, work the hard work that's been done here and I'm sure she would love to speak with you um, in person and share her vision of what this really means to Merrimack High School so if one wanted to do that make you feel more comfortable we will we will work with that the other concern I have is we need to have uh, an internal discussion about where the funds would come from. Correct. That, that is a problem or something we need to deal with. So I don't think we need to table it formally and then take it off the table next week and go through all of that. But if you can uh, bear with us and we'll put it on the agenda for April. Mm -hmm. uh, so then you'd, you'd want to do, uh, do a site visit at the library, correct? Yeah, if you can have them send, awesome. send me an email. Sure. Uh, we'll, we'll get something scheduled. Okay, we will do. And while we're still got you pinned down in the chair, uh, I just want to say that as we've had the, the school district deliberative session and the town deliberative session, it was great to see the new all-purpose room, uh, the bleachers, the floor. There were many appreciative comments from the public and uh, Shannon Barnes brought it up at the town deliberative session to to point out to everybody how nice it was so yes uh, I think there's a, a town-wide appreciation there and from my point of view I think the same thing happens when you're doing playground at a place like Thornton's Ferry School it's not just school people but others around town Correct. who have an opportunity to use it when school isn't in session so and you see that, you know, over the weekends, you see that all the time. Families bringing their kids down, using the equipment, and our schools are open all the time. I will say we are exceedingly uh, appreciative of the trustees lending their support to that, uh, the, the Jamie's floor and the bleachers and the Smith gym and everything like that because, you know, quite frankly, people were like, wow, this is absolutely spectacular. So I've got to give credit to, to Marsha McGill and Nikki Rowe for helping to pick out the colors of the flooring and everything like that because 
I'm a tad colorblind, so I didn't know what I was quite looking at. So they helped they helped me along. So I think it came out really spectacular, and we're very appreciative. So do you have a number? And I, I know you're maybe not prepared for this, but we haven't received the final invoice on that. And part B of that question is, we had talked about and, and allocated yeah three hundred fifty open amount right. of funding for sound systems. And when we were there the other night or last week, um, we were still paying Bob Malloy. Right. Nothing against Bob Malloy. He does a great job. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got to love Bob. But, no, we haven't put the, uh, the sound systems in. Uh, it's been a little bit of a delay, especially with the turnover as far as our technology director goes. Um, we had Nancy Rose for several years. She, she left us. It took us a while to find Jason Pelletier. So we wanted her to wait until Jason got on board and everything like that in order to, to finish off the project. So you gave us a, a not to exceed, I think it was $350,000 right. total. Um, it came in, from what, from what we have right now, it, it came in under that. We're still holding a large check because there's something on the floor that uh, we need uh, the vendor to fix. You, you don't know what it is, but we do, and it bothers us. So uh, we're not going to be going over the 350. It's, it's all going to come in on, on budget or a little bit below. Good. Uh, and as long as we're sending messages back to the school district, we haven't had an expenditure from the Watkins Prize Spelling and Prize Speaking contest yes. in a while, partially because of COVID. COVID. Yeah. I, I hope there will be some uh, messages going back that we think those programs need to continue and the money's there to, to pay the prizes. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else for, for Matt? Anybody? Bill? No, I'm good. Thank you. Pat? No, I was just going to comment that when you brought it up, actually, that you're right. The people in the audience that delivered a session love the floors. Yeah. And I'm quite sure you're going to see requests for the floors in other buildings. Let no good deed go unpunished. Yep. I'm sorry. My mic wasn't on, so I need to say that. Say it but again. Uh, you're, you're probably going to see requests from all of the other schools for that very same floor because that's what those gymnasiums were added to at the school, the elementaries. Uh, and um, I just, and it's, it's more than 10 years, so I won't be surprised. Yeah. And then there'll be the high school, so. The high school's coming up. That's on the CIP yeah, for some time. I know. In I, the I, few, I, well, you know. I that. know that. <laughs> I know. You know that. Yeah. So, but I think that's unfortunate. But on the other hand, it is fortunate. So I want to thank the parents group for taking the lead at Thornton's Ferry Parents Group. I was president Absolutely. of the, I was president of the parents group for a couple of years, many years ago. But at Thornton's Ferry. Uh, but the fact is, that's a lot of money to raise, and I really appreciate that you did it, and it's a great program. And yes, you're right. The other two elementaries are going to want it too. So you can tell them how they how you did it because. I understand that concept. I do. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Anything else for the school district? Okay. Moving on. Scholarships. Um, this is as much an announcement as a, and then a request. Uh, we went through the, or I went through the disbursements from the scholarship funds. And they were all paid except for one from Annabelle Maloney, uh, whose name now is Annabelle Rubin due to an adoption. But in any event, uh, that one had not been requested. I reached out to her, and she's not in school this semester, but anticipates uh, going back to school and needing the scholarship in 2023. So our practice in the past has been if somebody contacts us and requests an extension, then we would extend for a year, and we've never had to go to two years. Uh, there is an option. Uh, sometimes we had one a couple of years ago where uh, somebody said, nope, I'm not doing that. I've got a free freeload scholarship all the way for everything, for everything, for everything, and give the money to somebody else, which we did. So. Uh, in this particular case, I'm just going to ask that we extend the uh, scholarship award for Annabelle for one more year. Is there a motion to that effect? I'll move that. I'll, move that. I'll second it. 
Okay, very good. Uh, we'll take a vote if there's no further discussion. Uh, all in favor, uh, roll call vote. Bill? Bill is four. Yes. Pat? Four. And Chris is four. So three zero zero. That was an easy one. Um, deposits that we've received. There was a $10,000 deposit from the, for the Bear Christensen Fund approved by the uh, town council. And that was split 50-50 to principal and income. And then there was another 1,050 uh, for the same fund that was also approved uh, to go to principal by the town council. So that's just a notice that they took their action and the checks have been submitted to the bank. Uh, Very good. MVD, nothing overly exciting here, but I'll make the announcement because we haven't had the MVD annual meeting yet. That's March 29th, I believe. And they plan to add $100,000 to the uh, non-capital water purchase and uh, GRC treatment facility. 200,000 to the equipment and facilities fund and 236,923 to the system development fund. So we'll all be voting on that on March 29th. And they normally send us a check within a month or two after the uh, okay. annual meeting. And I think after that, they're going to be looking for another $200,000 to come back out of the equipment fund for, a, a, I think it's a 10-wheel dump truck. Any questions on that? It's really an MVD issue. No. Okay. Cloud storage. We've been off and on on this topic for several months. Um, I've talked to the IT people. They went to town manager and yes, we can do it. Uh, the question is, uh, what do we want to put in the cloud? Uh, a lot of what we do is mostly minutes and uh, agendas, which are already carried electronically on the town website. But there are some things um, that either we would like to access once in a while or uh, once in a while the public or somebody even town or school district might like to access that I think would be well served to be more readily available to the public or to the administrations. And uh, I'm just looking to see if there's agreement to that and if so, what types of things uh, would you like to see stored in the town cloud? Well, I think first of all, Chris, um, we need to discuss the difference between the storage in the cloud because that's a secure area and what they have right now on the website is not sufficient. They have to be stored in a PDFA format and they have to be secure as, as records. So, because I've been working with the town clerk to get school district records on in a school district cloud and it's a whole separate process. The, the town website isn't sufficient. That's not the cloud. I understand and fact, that. The, and in fact, the, we don't the need minutes. a duplicate because the minutes and uh, agendas are stored in the permanent record annually anyway. Right. That's what Diane is, is, is converting into a PDFA to put in the cloud. And there is space available. But you have to go into a particular format different than what's on the website. And, I'm, and, I'm fine yeah. with that. My, yeah, I mean, my but that's be, the point. But see, they're not readily available that way. That's the storage. Ah, okay. As, on the website, they're available, but not. It's a secure site, that uh, the cloud storage. So it's a little bit different than readily available. Granted, good point. So I, I think that we we need to talk about it actually and have in front of us a proposal of what it is you're looking at. And that's what I brought up a couple of months ago, is that there's so much stuff down there. And we need to take a look at the statutes and figure out and just write it out what it is we're doing. And because you're right, minutes need to be retained. And we need to have 
and Diane is converting many of them and putting them into PDFA, but our specific stuff um, is a little different. Well, I, I'm thinking some of our, I'm going to call it simplified financial records. For example, we, we, I generate every year an activity summary, the money that went in, the money that came out, not, not dividends and that kind of stuff, but checks written and deposits made. So okay. that's something that in a summary format could be stored elsewhere uh, rather than just in a folder in the, in the file drawer. Uh, and, and maybe, I think maybe we don't need to do that. That's, it's not a required report. But the, depending upon who the, go ahead, Bill. Chris and, Chris and Pat, why would, why would we want to store like financial information from Cambridge Trust in the cloud if we, you know, Cambridge Trust has all that stuff stored and probably a lot safer than anybody or as safe as it can be. Um, I mean, but, you know, we do get hard copies of financial information, but I'm not sure if it would make any sense to put financial information in a, in a cloud for, you know, town-based cloud, if you want to call it that. Okay, good point. I think it comes down to what it is we're required by statute to hang on to and for how long. And by statute, min minutes and quarterly reports in paper or electronic are permanent. Bank statements in paper or electronic format six years after audit, I wouldn't put those in the cloud. Right. I'd keep them for six years and then we, at w once a year, have the go through and get rid of them. Uh, but minutes of our meetings are permanent records, so yeah, those should go in the clouds. And annual reports are something that is suggested, since we do an annual report, that that gets kept permanently. Well, the town clerk already takes care of all of that, so that doesn't require any additional uh, Probably not from us. Effort from us. But some of the things that might be interesting is to take a look at th the wills that we have copies of or things that of how this account started. Th and that's what I want to do is put some of those things together in each of these capital reserve funds because the various bodies, it depends on the wording of the capital reserve fund whether the town council or the school board or the water commission is the agent to expend or the voters are because the school district actually has two funds that the voters have to approve it and we need to know that. So that's sort of a permanent thing and maybe we, you'd want to keep a record of prior things because we've had funds for years that when they go away, do we put that in the file or is that something that you'd want to put in the cloud as something that was done in years past because we're always referring to, and you did today, remember years ago when we um, it would be nice to be able to have a place where it's e readily accessible. Well, that was my thought. And yeah. if you have uh, proposals on that idea and you want to bring it up, uh, this, this may be a continuing discussion. I don't think we're, we're going think to resolve it all in one day or two, even two meetings. Um, but I would uh, appreciate your fresh look at it and, and, and see what you think. Uh, might be appropriate. So. Well, that's what I was hoping is that we'd start a discussion and take a look at it and then have a written policy and then implement it. That the implement that's going to be fun because I know you've tried, you've gone through the files. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm just going to say that we, we leave that. Pat, will you take that on as your? Uh, I'll work on it. Your look see? After the election. Oh, yeah. I have to deal with the election first. Um, however, I do want to talk about the fact, if I can, sir, for a minute, um, the letter that you got, since we're sort of going down the correspondence and whatever, yep. that you got from PNR. Uh, I was going to put that at the end because it's not Oh, all right, because I was going to say that's a Bear Christensen, and I don't know if, if Bill is aware of that. Okay, well... Where'd it go? I don't know if you want to talk about it under Bear Christensen Fund or sure. Later. Let's pick it up now for for Bill and for everybody else. This just was received in today's mail, and uh, it's a letter from Matt Kasparius. Uh, the Bear Christensen Fund has funded two weeks of summer camp in a scholarship format 
uh, for probably the last 20 years. And now that the town owns the fund, Matt has to come to us and ask for money instead of coming to the trustees of the fund for money. So we have a letter from him, not for a specific amount, but for to point out that the cost of camp is now $255 a week for town residents. I suspect it's more for uh, non-residents. Um, we would eventually need a specific invoice, but um, the tradition being that the fund gave two weeks of scholarship money uh, that Matt can distribute as needed. May, he may only give part to one person, part to some other person. That's that's up to them. Uh, but that's the letter we have from from Matt right now. If you want to address that with a motion or further information, Pat, uh, Bill hasn't seen the letter. What are you comfortable? What are you comfortable with, Bill? So is uh, is Matt asking for for the Bear Christensen Fund to fund two scholarships for two weeks? Is that what you said? No. Or one. Or he's, one he, scholarship for two weeks. He's asking for a donation. And what has been funded in the past has been the equivalent of two weeks, whether it goes to one kid for two weeks or two kids for one week or whatever. Uh, that's internal to the PNR uh, funding. They, they do that. We don't. Well, I'm comfortable with uh, the Bear Christensen Fund funding two weeks equivalent two weeks of scholarship uh, at Wasserman as a motion. And I'll second that. Okay. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. It's a roll call. Bill? Aye. Pat? Yes. Aye. Chris is aye. Three zero zero. Um, records discard plan, plan. As you pointed out, we have a lot That's of stuff. That's going to all be together, I think. So, uh, so we're going to do that along with the cloud thing. And, yes. Uh, but I think uh, there used to be. This is a long, long time ago. A requirement that bank statements were kept forever, and no trustee group before us ever did that. But there are some there from probably. 20 or 80 or 100 years ago. Uh, disposition, disposition of municipal records is RSA 33A. That's what I was reading from right, that said right. six years. Yeah. So that's what I'm hoping to do is to take this record and yep. figure it out. So the um, huge numbers of books from the PDIP can be discarded. I think we're six years into Cambridge Trust, so all those huge reports from Merrill Lynch can can go, and that'll open up a couple of drawers just by itself. Exactly. I mean, that was my thought. It was, But I, I felt uncomfortable as I was looking at them um, that I was going to be the one taking things out and throwing them away. Um, but if I can make a list of what I've thrown away or, or something. But I, I, anyway, I didn't want to do it alone, but as you know, two of us doing it, we can post a meeting. Well, I'm going to move that Pat be a committee of one to discard bank statements that are in excess of six years old. I'll second that. Any discussion? Are you willing to take that on? Yeah, and I'll just show them to Tom. I just... I. That would be somebody else because you're sitting here yeah. that he can confirm the date. Yeah, because some of those things are going to be too big to fit into the uh, shredding bin. And I don't know that we can shred those hard books that PDIP used to send us. So, uh, well, can you we'll assist? Yeah. Can you assist with that, uh, Tom? Or have Absolutely. somebody in your department do that? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Like I said, after the election, let me get through. Election first. Okay. Um, 
Any further discussion? Seeing no. none, call for a vote. Bill? Yes. Pat? Yes. I vote yes. Three zero zero. Okay, that brings us up to minutes. Now, I have here, I don't know if you have copies of the November minutes, Bill, or not. I will say we do need to handle these today because the town clerk under statute requires hard copies of minutes to be submitted for the previous year no later than March 31st. So we did have some discussions on the November minutes. Subsequently, some of that stuff has perhaps been determined to be a moot question. So uh, well, on do you the, want to shoot on that first, Pat? Yes, thank you. Uh, on the minutes that I rewrote and sent to you, uh, there were some suggestions. And I would like to say that I'm glad that I, I put the comment in there about the trustees approving of um, a list of stocks because I thought that that's why they were sending a, a list to you. But absolutely, I went back and listened to the tape again. Uh, and the fact is that uh, Eric and you and Bill, Chris, had a discussion about growth stocks you wanted to order, and he said he would send you a list. My assumption was he was sending it to the trustees to approve. I didn't realize that we didn't have that authority, and I was really sad to hear that. However, he was supposed to send you a list. The fact that he didn't send you a list is his, fault, his problem. Um, but that's, so that statement it should be corrected to just say that he's going to send you a list, which the period that he would send you um, a list of stocks Cambridge Trust proposes to buy to increase income in the common interest fund portfolio, period. The rest of it, Chris has suggested that uh, we include Bear Christensen when I referred to the Bear Christensen Trust and Watson when I referred to money going into the Watson Fund. But other than that, um, everything that was written in here I went back and listened again Chris and there absolutely there was a discussion about the credit market and you actually took part of this discussion oh, so, I'm sure I did but, but just putting it in the minutes there's no reason to delete it or or because it happened well I guess part of my point was that a lot of that is included in the is it 18 page whatever however long that presentation was that is included as an addendum to the minutes so a lot of that is in there already and doesn't need to be in the minutes but it doesn't make much difference you can put it in if you want I do um, on hang on just a second let me get further down into November Do you have a copy right there? I do. Okay, as we move down to some of the uh, discussions, there's a starts off bond returns, and that should be equity. Actually, the word that they used was bond over and over and over. I listened to it again. Okay, uh, and under that, the next line. Um, we talked about what sectors. Yes, you're correct. I'm, I missed that check here. Yes, so they said sectors over and over, so that should be sectors as well. other one way back at the end when we get into this discussion about uh, monies received there was a point about receiving five thousand dollars to add to the scholarship fund yes that's the one I, that's, and I think I, that should say what I agree scholarship. yeah 
that was Watson, and the other one you said put in Bear Christensen. Yep. Yeah, both of those. That's what I said. All right. Other than that, but I'll make those corrections, and I will send those to you, and then you can just have them replace it at what's online. All right. So do we have a motion to approve the minutes with the amendments just discussed? I, I will motion we approve the minutes with the amendments as discussed. And I'll second that. And I'll call for a vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye on a roll call vote. Aye, Bill. Aye, Pat. And I will vote yes. So that's three, zero, zero, which brings us to the minutes of January 21st. Okay. The minutes of January 21st have two adjournments in them because the whole last three paragraphs are taken from a different month's minutes. Yeah, that's what happens when you use the format. If, I know. If you take cut the, and paste. I understand. Cut the, cut the end out of it. And I want you to know that I actually emailed Becky and asked her not to post them, but if she would get back to you so that you could delete those paragraphs, and it was their decision to put it up that way. So, But I do have one correction because, again, you have to know I listen to the minutes. And the paragraph about the capital gains on the income side of the ledger, Heinrich stated that she had talked to town council. Heinrich stated, and by the way, I haven't been called Heinrich in 50 years. Even my students didn't call me Heinrich. Um, Heinrich stated that I talked to the town manager. No, nope, town council. Nope. I did not talk to the town council, and I did not talk to the... Council S-E-L? Nope. I don't even know his name. Matt Upton. Thank you. I talked to Paul McCallie, Okay. and that's what I said, and I went back to listen to it. Okay. And Paul McCallie contacted town council. Ah. I did not. Paul okay. did. And that's what I said at the meeting. Well, nonetheless, we got additional information from uh, Tom Donovan. Yes, we did. conflict with that, so the whole thing was kind of a... A moot question at this point. Um, it is for us, but on the other hand, it gave Tom Donovan something to realize that he's got to fix because there's a confusion in his trustees' handbook. So I'll be interested to see what the trustees' training in the spring talks about. All right, so help me out here. Which paragraph did you want to change? Um, it's actually the next to the last paragraph where she had talked to town manager. And he got the legal opinion, not me. And then, as I said, I want to get rid of the last four paragraphs. That, that yeah. Have not, yeah, I mean, I that goes without saying. I had already taken those out when I went through the thing. But yeah, whatever. I'm. We'll get that back to Becky. Okay. Um. Okay. With those corrections, would you yes. move? I will move. I will, I'll second. All in favor. Bill? Yes. Aye. Pat? Aye. I vote. Chris votes yes. There you go. Okay, next meetings. Just to point it out for the record, the uh, MVD meeting is April, excuse me, March 29th. Town elections are April 12th. And our next meeting is April 22nd, without objection. And that works for me. Then May 20th, and usually in May we invite Cambridge Trust to come. Uh, after that, June 15th, we do that one a little bit earlier because we normally need to approve uh, funding for the town capital reserve fund reimbursements. Okay. And that gives us time to 
approve it, wire the money, and do all that stuff before the end of the fiscal year. Okay. Um, I would point out that if we're going to have a tour of the library, it's probably going to have to be before the April 22nd meeting and post it as a meeting that it's just a simple tour. But that we need to know from Bill what dates. Well, let me, let me get an email uh, from the school district first. I'll, I'll get something and we'll circulate it uh, when we get something from the school district. But I'm going to ask, generally speaking, uh, we seem to be able to meet this time of day, 9 o'clock in the morning. Is there any other day that I can't do Thursday mornings, but other days that are out of the question for whatever reasons? No, I mean, the dates you described work for me, at, or tentative dates planned work for me at this point. Uh, well, April 12th is out for me. Yes, that's election day. Which means April 11th is not good, and, and there'll probably be some other time but we'll be counting and sealing ballots and testing the week before, but I, I'll see so what I be, can it do. It would be after the elections. Yeah, after the elections for the visit to the library probably makes sense, right? Yep. Okay, if you could do that, that would be terrific. And Thursdays is bad for you, so okay. Well, if Friday, okay. Okay, do we have anything else? The only other thing is that one of the emails that you sent around talked, and you talked about it again today, what other projects has this body approved that you're still waiting to receive bills for? I think the sounds, well, we haven't received a bill for the gymnasiums. See, I didn't realize that. Gymnasia. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the sound systems, which haven't been installed yet. I think that's it. That's it? Okay. We haven't, well. The town, count, town council routinely approves expenditures from capital reserve funds. But those all get billed once in June. Okay. And and that's the reimbursements that you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. yeah. When I so just that, saw this, that, I thought. It's an annual event. Um, MVD spends money and then we reimburse them on a rotating basis or rolling basis. So uh, I don't think we have anything specific pending, but uh, there will be some things that come from them periodically. Okay. So then that brings me to the the, the, uh, the novice trustee question here. So if once amounts are approved to give to a project, they don't get the check right away, they submit bills for it? Yes. We on, we, legally, we only pay for an, on an invoice. Okay. We can't just write a check for $300,000 and say, here you go. The, the example... Uh, that we used to use was, and I'll pick on the MVD, but it's not necessarily their fault, if you will. Um, but let's say the MVD says, we're going to buy a truck. It's going to cost us $100,000 and send us the $100,000. Then they get the check for $100,000. They buy the truck for $95,000. And where's that other $5,000 go? It's not being expended for the truck. It didn't go into their, or it could have gone into their checking account, which is a misappropriation of funds. So that's why we only pay when we have a direct invoice with a specific amount. Okay, because everything I've read talks about a voucher. Well, invoice and, voucher. And, and is, that's, is, is a voucher a letter saying, please give us this money, or you're saying a voucher is an invoice, an actual invoice for the project? I use voucher and invoice in that instance as equivalent. Equivalent. Okay. As I said, I've been reading through a bunch of things, and and I think that's all where we're at. Okay. I will, uh, I'll motion a motion to adjourn. Second. 
1025. All in favor, Pat Bill? Actually, uh, I'm just going to declare us adjourned. There you go. There That's being no other business. All right, everybody have a nice weekend. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Bill. Bill.